themselves in both very good on, on third down this year. Um, is it anything that's more complicated than just being good on first and second down and putting yourself into you know, easy to get distances, or, or is there a mentality that different teams have um, on third down? I think it's probably several things. One. The, the mentality that comes along with it is the amount of practice time and preparation you put into it. And I think uh, coach and our staff, we put a lot of emphasis on it the whole off season, during the season, and in the way we prepare for it. Uh, then it is, as you said, secondly, uh, related to how, how far you have to go, which historically has always been true. Um, but then the third thing I think is players. And this year, you know, we have some players that have really stepped up and have been making plays on that down uh, when we really need them to step up. Practice past week, you played a team that played a little more zone than man typically. Uh, is it the opposite with, with the Vikings? Did they go a little more man than zone? Or uh, what do you see? Yeah, I mean, they mix it up. Uh, that's one thing about this defense. I mean, they, they, the statistics would say it's a little bit more zone, but um, they, they have a way of mixing things up, um, throwing a lot of different variations of even a three deep zone at you. Um, and then when they, when they play man, um, they're, they're going to mix in man. And, and like we say every week, there's probably a 10 to 15 percent difference swing, I think, that can go week to week depending on the matchups I think that they think they have. Frank, on a play like that's the league, both yards and points, what's the big challenge facing that? What jumps out? I think like last week, we need to get in a rhythm. We need to stay in phase. You know, we, we had a lot of third and manageables uh, last week. I think we were we avoided negative plays. Uh, we had a, obviously a few negative runs, but we avoided. We didn't have too many penalties. Um, but I think the thing against this team is, you know, you have to. Last week I think we had three play three drives of over ten plays. Um, so that's the challenge against going up against the one of the better defenses in the league. And so I think one thing is you have to. Our players have to, and we have to scheme. And our players, we all together have to find ways to make a few chunk plays here and there. Frank, when you had a wrinkle like that handoff to Nelson Aguilar, can you just take us through when do you decide that's a good idea? How often do you have to rep it? And how do you know when it's the right time to call? Uh, yeah, well, coaches have just had a knack of seemingly to call those at the right time. As far as how we game plan them, um, it comes up different every week. You know, we really work well as a staff together in game planning. And so, um, you know, sometimes somebody might, you know, somebody might have an idea or see something on film. Um, or somebody might have done something in their own past in a, in a past staff, and all of a sudden, we, you know, it's a dynamic thing that goes on when we're game planning. And we get an idea, we kind of sort through it, debug it, does it fit us, how would we do it? And we try to look at four or five, six of those things every week, sometimes more up than others, what fits us. Or we, sometimes we, get, we, we think we like something, we get out in the practice field, and it doesn't quite look like it's ready. So we have to say, you know, keep it in the crock pot for another week. or we start over with a new recipe. Been around, Doug Nelson, now for what about two Nelson is kinda of like you know, allowed him to be the first guy you know, not only do that play but also in you know line up outside, you know, in the slot and drive and you know, I think what makes Nelson so versatile is uh, number one, he's a very smart player. I mean, uh, he he processes things quickly, he can learn all the positions. Um, you know, he's always the guy in meetings whenever a question's asked, he's 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 the guy who knows the answer all the time. Um, and the, just a very smart player. And then secondly, he physically, he just has the attributes that you can, he has vertical speed, he has short area quickness, and he has explosiveness. So, um, you know, that makes it easy to want to put him in those positions. You've been around Doug now for two years. What have you learned about him as a play caller? Um, what I've learned about, what I've learned about him and, and through watching him call plays is, uh, he, probably a little bit more unorthodox at times than uh, in a good way. Um, calling two screens back to back, for instance, the other day. Um, some of the stuff, uh, there's other examples that I don't even want to get into um, just for competitive advantage reasons. But there's other things that he's called that uh, at the time I thought, that's unique. I'm not sure that would have hit my brain like that. And uh, many times those things have worked out. And, um, so that, that's been fun to see and fun to work with. How important is that chess game going to be in, in this game with that defense that they have? I think it's very important. And, um, but at the end of the day, 
we, we all would tell you, anybody who's called plays, is it really comes down to the players executing them. And I, I do think there is an art to play calling for sure. And, and Doug has obviously had a phenomenal year doing that. I mean, you can't have a better year calling plays than he's had. So right. we think that we do think that uh, looking for that to continue. Frank, you, you had six guys with like three catches, four catches. And that's really the way the whole year's gone. We haven't had a lot of superstars. Uh, how much of that is product of let's be balanced, let's spread it out? And how much of it is just kind of the offense running the way it runs? And, it, and how much more dangerous Well, is I think you're exactly right. It is, it is how we've won the whole year. And, you know, that's what we talked about today in there as an, as an offense. Uh, we won this game like we won every other game this year. We're unselfish. We execute. We run the football. we good situationally. And, uh, you know, and, and we just we avoid the big mistakes, minimize, minimize the big mistakes. And I just give our players a lot of credit, just unselfish and maintain it that way, and we spread the ball around. Nick's, we always say, you know, Nick's like the point guard or Carson, whoever it is, just spread the ball around, read the progression. We do design plays for certain guys, but the ball gets sp invariably gets spread around. Doug called Everson Griffin a game record yesterday. Is he the guy to start the game plan? Well, he's definitely a premier pass rusher and player in, in general. He's had a great year. He's been a great player for a long time. So you got to account for him. You got to know where he's at. Um, he's earned the respect um, of being called a game wrecker. Uh, he's he's put that on his resume for sure. Frank, the average pass, pass length of, of Nick's passes on, on Saturday were just five yards, but you guys gained over seven yards after the catch. Is that a sustainable way to keep winning for this offense? Um, you know, every game's new, and we, we talked about that as well today. I mean, that was one of the things I think we excelled at was the run after catch. That point was made to our players today, just an aggressiveness with the ball in their hand, protecting the ball. Um, but that's always going to change um, week to week, depending on, depending on coverages that are being played, depending on the flow of the game. So every week we have a variety of short, quick, short, medium-range passes in the game plan. We also have multiple ways to get the ball down the field. And we just kind of feel that out as we go. You had success as a player, as a backup, not only winning games, but a lot of big games late in the season in the playoffs. How much does that make you appreciate what Nick and what Case have been able to do to get Yeah, I, I greatly appreciate it. And I think the number one thing that I've seen, saw from Nick, is just do your job. You got really good players around you. Just execute the offense and play your game. And, uh, and that's, that's what he did. What did you see from Nick as his progression, both mentally and physically and execution-wise? You know, I felt like in the first half, we, we were running the ball really effectively. And um, not I don't know what the run-pass ratio was in the first half, if you take out the two-minute drive at the, at the end of the first half. But my guess is it felt like a lot more run. In the second half, we got in a rhythm where we are throwing it just a little bit more. Uh, I felt like Nick really got in a rhythm throwing the ball um, and, and really gained a lot of confidence you know, moving the ball down the field that way. So I right. saw that progression. How far has Corey Clement come in the passing game? Really far. I mean, um, that w we've said it all year. That has been a surprise. I mean, you know, a running back from Wisconsin who's running power, you're not thinking he's going to come in here and be your third down back. Um, but he's worked very hard at it and, and really made a role for himself. Why is Nick good with the RPOs? Uh, Nick's, Nick's, like, if you're around Nick and you, you know Nick's a great basketball player, he, he's a point guard. I mean, if he was... If he was playing basketball on the street, he's going to wheel and deal the ball. Um, he's the guy out there. He can throw it behind his back with accuracy. He can give you the no-look pass. Um, he can be looking one way and hit a guy. I mean, he just has that, he has that knack and feel, and that's a little bit of the RPO game. Um, I think he's very comfortable with that. It seems you had a lot of success from early, not as much. In the second half, what changed in the second half? You know, I just think it was more flow of the game. I mean, we did get a good start. Um, he got a good start, you know, flow of the game, back and forth. I, I really didn't put too much into it other than more flow of the game. <laughs> Frank, there was, a, there was a report that the Titans are interested in, in talking to you about a head coaching job. Is that something you'd be interested in? Or? You know what? Right now, myself, our staff are interested in one thing only. And so that, that's all. I have no time. When I tell you I have no time for anything, to consider anything else and how we're preparing a game plan uh, to beat the Vikings. That's really all we're concerned about. I honestly have not thought much about it. Um, it's to stay focused. I've always, I learned that a long time ago. Just 
enjoy the people and the process that you're in, and, and I love it here, and I love where we're at. We, we got a, we're doing a pretty special thing right here, and wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Um, you know, just his opportunity came up, and I think some of it is, is, is the run after catch. There's something about a run after catch when, you know, even if it's not a, a 20 or 30 yard run, but you break a couple tackles and you get eight yards instead of, you know, uh, after the catch instead of three, get a, get the first down. You know, you get up, you know, you get that feel. Hey, first down, let's go. Um, and you could kind of feel that juice a little bit, and you could feel that he felt it. And uh, I just think that gave him confidence and Nick confidence as well. Right, the creativity that, that Doug will show as a play caller. You know, you had a big spot with fourth down on the Garrett run for the touchdown. Had Trey in the back. Is that something you do very often? I don't recall seeing it very much. And where did that come from, that, that call in that spot? Yeah, I mean, it's something we've had in all year. Um, it, you know, it is situational. You know, we got in our goal line personnel. Uh, that Trey is versatile enough. We have we put him back there in practice for some other things. We've moved him. You know, Trey can do that kind of stuff. And, and obviously, you saw that play. I mean, he goes in the backfield, and he, and he has a tremendous block on that play. So um, you know, just a credit to his versatility. You guys didn't cash in on two of the red zone opportunities. Um, did you look back at that and felt like there were opportunities there to throw uh, downfield as opposed to short of the sticks? Um, yeah, I mean, we're, you know, we're used to we're used to taking advantage of those opportunities. So anytime we get down there and and we don't score, we're we're disappointed. So um, thankfully, our defense was playing great. Yeah, I mean, you look and you say we could have done this, this, or that, but um, they played a couple. The one pass we had called, for instance, down there, that we. I've had so much success with uh, not the exact call, but a variation of a call. Uh, they covered it pretty well. And um, you know, we still got a completion, but ended up short. But they had everything, the 30-some the, the, the touchdowns that we've thrown, the routes that they had those covered. So we threw it underneath. It was the right place to go with the ball, but just came yeah, up short. That was short. in the last drive, right? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Jim, getting back Thanks to Trey uh, for a second, um, is that something that he really improved on? Um, seemed like when you put him in those spots last year, maybe he didn't make that block. Trey? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that he's had limited opportunities in those spots back there. Um, but this was certainly a great time to come up big uh, in a playoff game like that. The RPOs that were so successful in the second half, was that directly because of how well you guys ran the ball in the first half? Yeah, I mean, I think our, I think the RPOs in general, again, you know, it's, it's, it's always going to be a part of our game plan every week. I think we do it very well. I think part of the success we have is that we don't overuse it. Um, you know, you got to you got to do a little bit of everything to keep. If you just do it all the time, uh, teams are too smart, defenses are too smart, um, players are too smart. So you mix it up, and uh, we've just done that exceedingly well, I think, uh, over the course of the year. Frank, when you look at the Vikings, statistically they're at the top, but when you watch them on tape and, and examine them, are they the single best defense you faced this year? I think they are the best defense we faced this year, and I think one of the reasons why is. They can get pressure with four, you know, and cover with seven. And anytime you can get pressure with four and cover with seven, um, you know, that's that's kind of been the key to our defensive success. I mean, that's that's a winning formula. That's been a proving winning formula for a long time. So I think this week is a good test of that. So from the flip side of that, offensively, you know, we have a challenge in front of us to be able to put together drives, find some big plays in those drives, and uh, and be smart with the football. Okay. Thanks. Thanks.